Yes. Yes. Hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And I realize it's been a little bit, two weeks or so without a vlog, which, uh, you know, life happens. These things happen. Um, but I'm back here today. I'm back here on a Thursday. I'm all excited to sit talk shop, talk vape, drink beer. We're going to do uh, some first impressions of a couple devices. We're going to drink some beer. Uh, we're going to do some shout outs. Uh, I have a, not a full review, but a slight review of the KM Carbon OKR 10 device that I talked about previously in a vlog. We're going to go into that just a little bit more, but we do have a lot of cool stuff to talk about. So thank you once again for joining me here in uh, in vloggy land. As always, this is available on SoundCloud as well. If you just want to listen to me talk, uh, you know, download it, listen to it, your car, play it really loud and drive throughs so people get confused. That's always uh, that's always fun to do. That's actually happened to me uh, listening to like Clickbang or Kevin or the TVA show, uh, and it's too loud in a drive through and. You're like, I'm sorry, what was that? What did you say about vaping? They've never said that. Um, first up, first up, what the first thing I want to talk about is beer. Um, because it's out of the fridge and it's now slowly getting warmer, and I want to drink it at the proper temperature. But this beer, this beer comes to me uh, from Trevor. Uh, Mr. Trevor writes me and says, Dear Grim Green, thank you for trying out my favorite beer, the Belching Beaver brand. Peanut butter milk stout. Wow, that is just sounds crazy to me. This smooth beer is something that you can enjoy at any time of the day. Enjoy. Well, it's uh, roughly 9 o'clock here on the West Coast, and uh, that's when I'll be enjoying it. I also have some stickers from a company that I'm currently working for, White Label Juice Company. These guys watch your videos all day long while we're hard at work to come up with new flavors and shipping orders. I would really appreciate it if you could give a shout-out to us while reviewing the beer. <laughs> I know as soon as you post up the review on this, I will be watching it. Thanks again for all you do. Keep up the good work. So there you go. Trevor from White Label Juice Company. He sent me his favorite beer, which is always, you know, beer uh, Beer kind of brings people together. There, I, I, I talk as much about beer with people now as I do about vaping. For every email that I get asking what's the best ohms to run on a DNA 30 device. I also get the same amount of emails saying, hey, I just tried this beer. Hey, you should check this out. Hey, have you done this? Hey, have you tried that? Hey, have you been to this brewery? And so beer is one of those one of those great, uh, you know, uh, levelers of, of society. They just, people come together, and if you're a beer person and you like and you like the craft beers, then, you know, you have something in common. Much like vaping, you have something in common with other people. And so uh, here's to you. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get into this Belching Beaver Brewery. When I first read his letter, I was like, oh, Belching Beaver brand? Belching Beaver Brewery? That sounds so ridiculous but trevor wasn't lying uh it's a thing that exists i'm gonna pop this open it's a big old bottle i've not done uh, it smells like peanut butter i mean that smells exactly like peanut butter holy crap that smells like peanut butter i feel like i'm eating peanut butter and i have not even eaten any peanut butter that's how much it smells like peanut butter um just gonna pour it into my favorite pint glass just says fuck yeah uh slip and v here's to ya they sent me this a long time ago. They just got married. Congratulations. Um, and yeah, this is still one of my favorite cups. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> um, so again, I'm going to pour this over my keyboard, which is always a good idea. I guess it keeps me on my toes, right? I'm going to try to get some sort of head on here so I can drink through the head like a man, as Ruby Roo suggests. Look at that, Ruby. How's that? Fuck yeah, that's a good head, and I'm going to drink through it like a man. So Trevor, thank you for sharing your favorite beer with me. Uh, I'm going to enjoy some Belcher Beaver Brewery Peanut Butter Milk Stout. Um, shortly before I kicked on my camera, is that still too bright? I feel like that's uh, still too bright. I'm going to turn that down. Um, I clicked over to Beer Advocate. This beer is on here. Belching Beaver Brewery Peanut Butter Milk Stout. Uh, it has a 92 score, so it's sort of a, I mean, it's not quite a world-class beer, according to Beer Advocate, but it is outstanding. Uh, there's a lot of reviews for it. It's brewed year-round. It's a milk sweet stout, and I'm a big fan of milk stouts. I really like the Samuel Smith. Um, I really like, although no, that's an oatmeal stout. Never mind. Uh, I had a different. I had an. I had an Inkasi uh, brewing company uh, 
Otis. Not the vanilla Otis, but just the Otis Otis. Really, really freaking good. Really impressed by that. I was bummed I only bought one uh, one small bottle of it. But Trevor, here's to you. Here's to peanut butter milk stouts. It's uh, it's surprisingly sweet, very very creamy, very very creamy, but surprisingly sweet. The peanut butter aroma is very pungent, um, but when you actually taste it, it kind of uh, it tastes more like um, like a sweet peanut rather than like like peanut butter, like Peter Pan peanut butter. I've said peanut butter more times in the last five minutes than I have possibly uh, possibly in my whole life. Uh, it's <laughs> shockingly good. I mean, I wasn't. Uh, I was skeptical of this peanut butter milk stout. You kind of get it in your jowls there. It kind of has that peanut buttery feel. Very bizarre. Mm. It's good. Dude, that's good. Uh, that's a good... I mean, if that's your favorite beer to have, Trevor, that's a good beer. You're a good man. That's a good beer. Um, I'll post a link in the description to the Beer Advocate site where, if you're so interested, you can read up on the Belching uh, Beaver Brewery and uh, all of their offerings. Their peanut butter milk stout apparently is is quite delicious, at least in the eyes of Trevor and now in the eyes of myself. Mm. It's really good. Really good. So after that, uh, I would like to do just a couple uh, shout-outs. And these first ones aren't really shout-outs. They're just people I think you should know about. Um, there's just one girl on Instagram named Kylie Vapes. And I believe Ruby Roo has talked about her, has shouted her out before. But her Instagram is easily one of my favorite Instagrams of all time. And I love that she uses the Toot Life hashtag. That just, it kind of makes me feel cool. Like, I'm like, ooh, Kylie Vapes uses the... Toot Life Instagram, you know, the Toot Life hashtag. I think that's so cool. Um, I'll post the link in the description to her Instagram. But it's it's a lot of, it's n like normal vapey Instagram stuff. It's pictures of mods. It's hand checks. It's this, that, and the other. A lot of what you see on Instagram. But she also does insane trick videos. Some of the coolest that I've ever come across uh, in my travels across the internet. Just this one, for example. It's synced up to music, and she's blowing vapor rings like you can't even imagine. And she does that whole, like, pushy the vapor ring thing. Maybe I'm just jealous because I will never be able to do that. But I'm going to post a link in the description to her, in her Instagram. If you're on Instagram and you are a vapor, holy crap, you owe it to yourself to follow Kylie Vapes. She just seems like a super, super cool person. And just does these ridiculous, ridiculous uh, vape tricking videos and dragon and the Bane mouth and just pushing vapor rings all over the place. And I just think it's super cool. I always like it uh, when her stuff comes up in my feed. I think it's so cool. I think I've liked like uh, at least 50% of her uh, of her stuff. But uh, yeah, if you're a vapor and you're on Instagram, like I said, you really owe it to yourself to follow Kylie Vapes. I'll post a link in the description to her Instagram and you can follow it. It's at Kylie Vapes. Uh, K-Y-L-E-E -E Vapes. K-Y-L-E-E -E Vapes. Her name is Kylie. <clears throat> Pardon me. Robin, is her name Kylie? Kylie Vapes. Post a link in the description. Additionally, if you're on YouTube, which it seems like uh, it seems like every every vapor in existence is on YouTube. Let me have a quick toot here. Seems like every vapor in the vape world is on YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, then you really owe it to yourself to subscribe to this guy, Twisted Mess. He doesn't upload videos like super, super regularly, but all the videos he uploads, I always watch. They're so so cool. He is also on Instagram. I'll try and track down his Instagram. I see him post on Reddit all the time. Twisted Messes. My apologies. Twisted Messes on YouTube. I'll post a link in the description to his YouTube channel. But he does crazy builds. And I'm not one of these guys that does crazy builds. I don't show crazy builds. I don't build crazy builds. But I love, 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 love looking at crazy builds. It's like coil porn on Instagram. He just has cool shit, and all his videos are are really super cool. They're very in-depth. He shows you how to do, you know, these niachrome chain coil build. What? 
what even is that? What is the benefit of that? I don't even know, but I still watch them. And the last one he uploaded, the fused Clapton coil, just looks so cool. The guy has crazy, crazy coil building skills. In fact, over a month ago, he uploaded the zipper coil build. And I don't want to say that anybody kind of ripped him off and I don't believe that anybody ripped him off but other people have since then since his video have uploaded their own uh, their own similar uh, build videos uh, but yeah he's got a zipper coil he's got how he makes his parallel coils the spiral wire twisted 29 gate twisted 28 gauge dual center post spiral parallel it's crazy you know and I don't generally even want to bother building this stuff i just like looking at it and, and it's cool and someday i'm going to meet twisted messes and he's going to show me some build and i'm gonna, i'm going to vape one of i'm going to send him an atomizer to build to build that's what i'm going to do twisted messes if you're watching this email me i will send you an atomizer and i want you to put a fucking rad build on it because i know you can go subscribe to his youtube channel it is uh it is it is super cool so First shout out of the night. I know I'm only just getting to the shout outs now, 11 minutes into the video. No big deal. Tony Pitts. Maybe he doesn't want his last name out there. We'll just call him T Pitts. No, no, that's too obvious. How about Tony P? <laughs> hey, Mr. Green, we've spoken through email before and he did send me some beer from good old Utah. Uh, I never gave you my whole vaping story and I would hope to make it into a vlog. My biggest influence in my life is my father, as is mine. He had smoked my entire life, I'm 21. With him previously smoking before I was born, it sums up a grand total of 26 years of smoking, with him being 53 and smoking about a pack a day. I was a little concerned about his health. He'd wake up coughing and hacking every morning and couldn't wake couldn't walk a mile without gasping for air. He tried multiple ways to kick the c cigarettes, gum patches, medication, even trying to quit cold turkey. Nothing seemed to be effective. Also, the icing on the cake is my grandfather recently passed away from lung complications due to smoking. God, smoking kills so many people. Ugh. What better reason to stop the cigs, right? It was time for me to get him into vaping. He's now five months without a cigarette, vaping his trusty MVP version 2 and Aerotank. I feel like getting him into vaping was the best thing I could have done for him. He can now do the things he loves uh, to do with the family. Uh, we even watch your videos together. If you can congratulate his amazing work and let him know that he did the right thing. Yes, I don't know his name because you didn't give me his name, Mr. Tony P. Uh, but Tony P's dad, congratulations. You've probably done one of the greatest things. Not only are you not smoking anymore, but uh, you know you're spending time. You're spending time with Tony, and uh, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. I think that's fan fucking tastic. Apologize for my language, but congratulations to you. Congratulations to your son. Uh, I know they're. I know it's very risky in the vlog nowadays, but here's some bands to check out: Maylene and the Sons of Disaster. Of course, Maylene and the Sons of Disaster. My old band used to play with Maylene and the Sons of Disaster. Dallas is an incredible dude, super nice guy. They do really know how to rock. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Tony, uh, for that. I do have another one. Uh, where was my other shout out? Um, I've got a folder now uh, in my Gmail of shout out requests going back well into September. Um, I get a lot of shout out requests, so I try to be as accommodating as I can, but I really only have a couple minutes at the beginning of the vlog to do said shout out. So you can imagine that the the requests that I get are, are, are somewhat overwhelming sometimes. I get probably 10 to 15 shout out requests every single day. And I have to tell everybody the same exact thing. I said, I'll see what I can do for you. I get a lot of shout out requests and, and I'm cataloging them now in a folder so I can just access this folder and uh, and uh, yeah and uh, and do and do the shout outs of uh, of people of people um, there was someone else Ted yes Ted does everybody remember Ted uh, the guy the vapor vet who I met at ECC super nice guy taught himself how to build even though he's legally blind um, uh, okay, uh, 
he emailed me and said, hey Nick, I just watched your latest vlog. I was blown away. All I can say is thank you for the great shout out. It was very humbling and it meant a lot to me and my wife. I also suffer from ADD and some depression because of my sight, and when I was having a bad day, I watch one of your videos, and then everything is all good again. Thanks for being a great friend and inspiration to me and my family. No, you are an inspiration to me, Ted. This is what you have to understand. You're the inspiration to me. Uh, if I could ask you a favor, absolutely you can ask me a favor. My son James and his wife Allie are the ones that got me into vaping, and they have been trying to stop smoking for over a year now year now well i finally convinced them to start to stop smoking and start vaping full time a little backstory my son is in the army at fort bliss el paso texas and he just got back from afghanistan about five months ago he is a great kid he watches your videos every time they come out he is now starting to build his first rda with your help and mine so if you could when you have the time would you give him a shout out it would blow him away again thanks for all you do for the vape people across the world we will touch base soon of course ted and i uh we have emailed uh, a couple of times um since then but uh but yes james congratulations um you have a great dad thank you for your service i hope that everything goes well for you i really hope that uh you know, I just like people coming together and kind of helping each other, especially like in that family sort of unit. You know, you got your dad Ted into vaping and now he's pushing you to be a better vapor. And uh, I, I just like hearing stories like this. So, yes, yes, yes. James and your wife, Allie, consider yourselves shouted out. Keep up the good work, uh, especially you, Ted, as well. And uh, and yeah, we can all we can all keep vaping together. I think that's uh I think that's a fantastically inspiring story. Um, one last shout out before we get to any first impressions. Um, I do want to give a shout out. People always ask me again, as usual, what retail stores are carrying the uh, the uh, the Namber juice these days. And uh, one of the newer ones is Aqualung Vapor Supply. This is 309 West McDowell Road, Phoenix, Arizona, 85003. Um, Yes, Matthew, Aqualung Vapor Supply, they are carrying uh, the Namber Juice. If you're in the Phoenix, Arizona area, you know, stop by the shop, demand some Namber. Go in there and bang on the countertops and demand your Namber Juice. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't bang on the countertops. But yeah, so if you're in the Phoenix, Arizona area, 309 West McDowell Road, I don't know where that is, but I'm assuming if you live in Arizona that uh, you may know where that is. You might go, oh yeah, that's by the, uh, that's by the Circle K. No, wait. It's by the 7-Eleven, that's right. It's by the 7-Eleven in between the dry cleaners. You know, you, you'll know where it is. But yeah, Aqualung Vapor Supply. They are carrying the Namber Juice. I think that wraps it up for shout-outs uh, right now. Um, let me just double-check and make sure that everything's good and on the up and up. Yes, now I think would be a great time to do some first impressions. <laughs> Just to put everyone at ease, yes, I have triple, quadruple, octuple checked my microphone to make sure that it's uh, that it's picking me up just well. Uh, two things to talk about right now during the first impressions. The first is a mechanical hybrid mod. Uh, this comes from Beyond Vape. It's the Araya made. Let me get my notes here. I feel like a newscaster. Uh, Hyperion mod. This kind of just came in. Uh, 24 karat gold plated finish. For reliable conductivity and it will not tarnish over time uh four post build deck adjustable airflow wide board drip tip here's the part that upsets me let's get back to that wide board drip tip in a second can be used as a hybrid or with the included 510 top cap bottom fire button has silver plated over brass inside of a gold plated body venting in both the locked and unlocked position uh yeah that's that's what i got from beyond vape this thing is uh it's kind of beautiful. The gold, you're not going to be able to pick up this gold color in here. But uh, it is hybrid, hybrid, meaning that the atomizer connects directly to the tube here. Okay, this video is not going to do it justice. It has two airflow slots, one on each side. It feels nice. It just, it feels kind of luxurious, like a luxurious mod. If you can lock it like that so you can set it down, you can unlock it like that so it fires. Um, this is uh, just a, a dual coil uh, center post style 
uh, coil in here, I used five wraps of 24 gauge Canthal. So whatever that comes out to, it's low. It's 0.2, I think. Um, the performance has been top notch and I've just been leaving the airflow holes wide open. Um, you can adjust them down if you want. See, that's about halfway. I've just been leaving them wide open because these slots are have amazing airflow. You, it's nice and whooshy when you take a drag on it. Just clouds. Clouds, bro. Clouds for days. Um, nice and springy on the bottom. I, I really like this. And I posted a picture of it on Instagram on what day? What day did I post that picture on Instagram? Friday? Last Friday? Anyway, and I said, well, I might as well take a picture of it now while it's nice and, and shiny and non-scratched up. I'm interested. Really what I'm interested in with this mod is to see how dinged up it possibly gets. Because right now... It just looks flawless, but I am going to beat the hell out of this mod. I don't even care. That's my job. I'm going to rub it on other mods. I'm going to throw it in my backpack. I'm going to throw it uh, in my pocket. Uh, pardon me. Ooh, gross. Sorry about that, Sheik. I just want to see how scratched up this mod can possibly get. And while we're on the subject of the drip tip, um, it does have this, like, uh, this insulator. It has a Teflon insulator right there on the white, which apparently is a better heat sink than an actual heat sink or Delrin. And it says wide bore drip tip. And if you look at this drip tip, you go, yeah, that's a wide bore drip tip. And then you look at the base and it's this tiny little hole. What's the point of having a wide bore drip tip if the little hole down at the bottom is all dinky and tiny? Looks cool, looks cool as hell. Hate using it. Hate using this because I can't drip through it, so I had to find an actual wide bore drip tip in order to drip through this. Uh, doesn't change the airflow really uh, at all. It's still great. You have to do the Cali Claw on this. That's just the way that I've been vaping. Uh, clouds for days. I think it's. Uh, I think it's pretty great. I mean, it feels like a really fancy mod. Um, they're they're saying it's a luxury uh, mod, and I'm gonna I'll post a link in the description on Beyond Vape where you can get this um, the 18650 version for a luxury mod. Think about the fact that it's 24 karat gold plated mod, and it's a luxury mod. 190 bucks. That's that's cheaper than a lot. <laughs> this I mean that's cheaper than a lot of mods out there. Um, there are mech mods that are way more than that there are dna 30 mods out there some that i just did videos for that are more expensive than that so this gold plated luxury hybrid mod with a great deck adjustable airflow it looks beautiful won't tarnish like brass or copper highly conductive 190 bucks it seems like that's a mistake to me, but uh, evidently they're selling it for 190 bucks. And in the description to this video, I will post a link if you're so interested. Uh, this is in hybrid mode. It does come with a 510 uh, top cap, so you can use any rebuildable atomizer you want. But I mean, if you have a gold atomizer and a gold mod, then yeah, you're gonna put it in hybrid mode just so it looks so cool. And it's not, it's not gigantic. I mean, if I hold it up to the flask, much shorter than the flask. I mean, I mean, not much shorter, but with the K font on there. Anyway, it's a tiny, tiny, it's a small-ish luxury mod. It just feels like a nice mod, and it was really easy to build with 24-gauge Canthal. I like it. I've been using it. Um, obviously, I will report back later via a full, full YouTube video on, uh, on how it's held up and how the scratches. That's really what I'm after is is the scratches. Let me take a freeze frame right now so that we can come back to that uh, later on in, in life and see how the, uh, how the scratching held up. Yeah, good. Really good airflow. Really, really good airflow. The flavor's nice. I'm interested to see how reduced the chamber is. Eh. It looks uh, reduced-ish. You're not going to be able to see this build. 
No, you're not. But clouds. Clouds, bro. It's just happening. Um, it's great. Uh, I've really enjoyed it, and I'm going to continue to enjoy using it. And then, uh, like I said, I'll report back later with how it's held up as far as scratches go. Yeah, just... <laughs> that was so dumb that I got that excited about blowing vapor on my friggin... <laughs> my friggin' pop filter. But, uh, but yeah, so the next one I have to talk about... Um, with the DNA 40 coming out and all these really cheap Chinese chips that are actually really, really good, like the SX350 and this, that, and the other, it's, I don't want to say it's hard to get excited for another DNA 30 mod. It's a little hard to get excited for another DNA 30 mod. Fortunately, this mod just looks crazy. It looks crazy. This is the DBM30, okay? This comes from Dalton Box Mods, and I'll post a link in the description, and not only did he send that along, but he sent along a very, very, very detailed and long pamphlet on everything you would need to know about the Dalton Box Mod. Hmm. Hmm. Big, uh, big sort of packet of information, his history, how he decided to start making the mod, the different, uh, there's the version one, uh, the updates, there's final production, there's a version two, the prototype, whole bunch of stuff. Um, it's powered by the DNA 30, you know what I mean? Which is pretty tried and true. Uh, if you don't have a DNA 30, you need to get on the regulated train because, uh, regulation is kind of, uh, kind of fantastic. Um, so he lists the specs of the DNA 30, um, it's 250 grams with the steel plates, 185 grams with the acrylic plates, which is what I have on there now. Um, he says, please take the time to contact me before making the review. This isn't the full review. This is kind of just a first impressions. Um, the acrylic plates that I got would be at an additional cost. So here's this thing, okay? It's made what I believe to be out of an external hard drive sort of body. Um, these all are finger screws and you can unscrew them he says to don't take don't take both the front and the back off at the same time only take one uh one or the other off i can't imagine unless you're changing out this to the stainless steel version why you'd need to do that uh it is usb rechargeable i have two panasonic gcr 18650s in there right now which seem to be doing a very very nice job and really this thing lights up like christmas when you press the button wicked blue lights i mean it looks like a pc build in there let me take a two so i can press it longer kind of crazy right kind of crazy let me take the silo tank off and you can see the lights better oh nope the lights don't light up unless there's an atomizer attached they just blinky blink damn it man i'm gonna burn up my atomizer um, this is, by the way, this is the Beyond Vape Silo Tank. Uh, I don't think I'm going to do a full review for it, but all you need to know about the Silo Tank is that it's basically an Aspire Nautilus tank with way better airflow, super more adjustable airflow, stainless steel on top, glass in the middle, and you can use the Aspire Nautilus Mini vertical coil heads in there, and it just works just fantastic. I have this opened up. Oh yeah, not even to the full. Can you see the full one? The full one's huge. Oh, I turned it off. Oh no, I locked it. There we go. Crazy. Crazy lights. Um, this is like metal grating, so you can kind of, you can see the batteries in there. You can kind of see through it as it lights up. There's an LED over here. There's an LED over here, and you're thinking to yourself, maybe I don't want a, you know, uh, a cyberpunk rave party in my hands every time I press the button. Which, who doesn't? I mean, that's cool. You can't just flip this little switch right there. Turn those lights off. It's not super practical. Um... I'm not going to take this to the grocery store. Um, I'll take it to vape meets. I'll probably keep it on my desk, but it's not, I mean, it's, it's, it's a showpiece. You know what I mean? 
it looks wicked cool and I could see like if you were a computer buildy guy like it looks like the inside of my PC with all like the LED lights and the acrylic and the metal on that side and the clicky button there's a USB charger it looks like a computer building thing you know what I mean like it looks like a, something a PC builder would be into um, this is a very sort of a niche kind of uh, market thing going on here this is the DBM I'll post a link in the description to uh, to where you can pick them up uh, let's see if we can get a price there's four in stock right now with the green LEDs there's the data sheet box mod does it say no I'm already on that page oh here we go here's a price shipping from Europe no those are the plates I don't want those yes so it's 249 euros which I have a feeling oh that's over $300 that's a $318 mod so vape budget hands like I said this is kind of a niche not everybody's going to be into the way this looks and I get that I think it looks cool the question is would you end up paying over $300 for something like this with a DNA 30 in it maybe if he does the DNA 40 I don't know you know what I mean time's gonna tell obviously in the end the decision is yours to make um, I'll report back via full YouTube video again on how it's been holding up how I've been getting along with it how it's actually uh, performed in the real world you know what I mean this is this is something fun for me to take to vape meets you know what I mean and, and impress people with the lights because uh, the lights impress me I think they're cool but yeah this is just one guy making these mods um, they're a little over three hundred dollars so get out your vape budget hands but I could see this appealing to a lot of people and I could see a lot of people not even caring at all like they'll just go oh I have no interest in that whatsoever and that's fine but I could also see a very select group of people being really really excited about the way this looks the way it lights up and uh, just kind of the way that it is so yeah it is what it is that's the Dalton box mod um, what I want to do while I have a little bit of time is jump into review time so yeah I talked about this in a previous vlog this is the KM so this is the KM mod version 1 and uh, I was planning on doing a full video for this and then I saw oh huh uh, pardon me wow that was really bad chic I am sorry but you gotta live that burp life keeping up with the KM mod website uh, website Facebook it appears it appears that they're going to be releasing the version 2 so I'm like ah, I don't want to do a full video for the version 1 considering how quickly this is going to be outdated because he has the version 2 possibly up for pre-sale soon it comes with a 60 watt Raptor chip it's a hundred percent carbon fiber enclosure and uh, it's gonna be 200 bucks shipped um, which is a screaming deal especially for a 60 watt Raptor chip hundred percent carbon fiber enclosure so the version one does not 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 have a hundred percent carbon fiber enclosure it uses that same box it uses that box that the Duke uses it uses the box that the uh, that the hexome uses but he has these carbon fiber plates attached to it which kind of makes it just a little bit wider I guess you can kind of see plate here plate here the edges are sharp I mean they're not it's not comfortable to hold in your hand for a really long period of time I've been using it I mean on and off since I got it obviously and most recently I've been using it with a uh, with a modified tugboat I don't even know the wattage of this I know that the tugboat is one ohm I just adjusted it to taste there's a little adjust a thing here which I'm told is called a potentiometer but I like calling it the adjust a thing there you can kind of see it I just have it set I just have it adjusted to taste I turned it all the way down took a toot mm, turned it up took a toot mm, turned it up perfect 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 uh, it does have the fat daddy vapes 510 connection on there which is sort of a self-adjusting spring-loaded 510 connection so basically everything except for the tugboat version 2 
will fit on there and just sit nice and flush. The one strange thing about this box, and it's the same problem that the Duke suffers from, it's the same problem that the Hexome suffers from, it's crooked. The top of the box isn't level, so your 510 connection is at a slight angle, and when you hold it upright, your atomizer is at a slight angle. You wouldn't even notice it just using it, but I look at it and I go, that is completely, totally crooked on there. No big deal. It's just one of those things. It's getting really nitpicky at that point. But yeah, plenty of uh, whew, plenty of clouds, plenty of power. Uh, I really enjoyed using this. I wish it was more comfortable to hold. I kind of would have liked maybe like a carbon fiber sticker on there rather than actual carbon fiber plates. The carbon fiber plates kind of make it feel a little bit more substantial, a little more durable. I'm sure that you will be able to somewhere find a version one if that's what you're into, but according to their Facebook, which I'll link to in the description, it looks like they're coming out with the KM version 2.0 with its own uh, manufactured sort of a 100% carbon fiber uh, enclosure. And it's gonna have an upgraded chip. And it has, ooh, there's more. There's more. Uh, Zener diode for low voltage cutoff, battery protection, inline fuses for overcurrent protection, gold contacts in the battery sled, fat daddy stainless steel 510, self-adjusting center pin, C and K tactile switch, sleek, small, clicky. I was clicky a thing before I started saying clicky. Uh, CNC milled, hand sanded, polished, and waxed. These are built to order and it'll take approximately three days to build and test and ship them. Um, three days is not unreasonable at all. But I'll, like I said, I'll post a link in the description. They're rolling out the version two. And so I don't want to do a full video for the version one. I would just like to say it's an OKR 10. I've enjoyed using it. I'm really much more interested in the version two. I think it looks cool it still looks like it has that sort of ugh, hard edge around the edge of it but otherwise i've enjoyed using it um the internals um which you may or may not be able to see should i try to do the the focus on it thing focus on it can you focus on it for me oh yeah oh look at it focused the internals are wicked nice and clean. Like this is all covered up. It's just a battery sled. You can't see any wires. You can't see any of that nonsense. Um, it is it is really well made. And that's why I, I would be so interested in the Carbon uh, Mod version 2. Um, I think it's cool and I've enjoyed using it. Like I said, not a full review, just kind of a, a follow-up to what I had said before. And the reason I'm saying it now is because they're, uh, well, they're coming out with the version 2. Which, uh, which is very, very cool. And I'll post a link in the description to where you can find that. Now, I believe, ooh, was that all the time I gave for that mod? Might be time for some viewer mail. Viewer mail. That's the best, <laughs> that's the best dragon that you're ever gonna get out of me. <laughs> I'm so stuffy right now. This nostril appears to be working. Um, can't do a dragon, can't do any tricks. Nope, <laughs> pathetic, pathetic. Maybe that's why I like Kylie Vape so much. Cause she can do those cool tricks like that. Um, anyway, first, uh, first, first, first things first, uh, Jace. Um, uh, I've been watching your YouTube videos for a while now for information. I appreciate you not pushing people to follow your lead. You merely impart information and clearly state your opinion. That is what I do, Jace. Thank you for being for being on it. Uh, so to the meat of the matter, after watching your videos, I learned about APVs, moved up from 510 styles, um, smoke tech, Vamo. Uh, I'm looking to change again. Smoke tech unit is adequate, but apparently not as well built as I would like. After having it for almost used a year, I dropped it for the first time from my jacket to the concrete after not quite managing to catch it with my foot. I've done that. Instead of catching it with your foot, you end up kicking it recently, and that was close enough to cause a short in the unit. I'm hoping you can point me in the direction of a few units that might be more sturdy and slightly different styling, perhaps. Uh, here's what you're going to get from me, Jace. Um, 
Criteria, good quality materials and build. Variable wattage, uh, battery strong enough to last me at least 12 hours. Accepts uh, the fitting for an Aspire Nautilus Mini. Uh, preferences, independent battery, easier and cheaper to replace than rather the whole unit. Not cylindrical design, though I was looking at the Segeli 30 watt. Uh, here's what I would do, Jace. I am a fan of box mods. I have always been a fan of box mods and I will always be a fan of box mods. There's one, there's a couple box mods in particular that I'm thinking of in my head. And one is the Hexome. And you might not need uh, uh, 50 watts, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't you shouldn't get 50 watts. Um, one thing in here, I'm trying to find it on their site. New arrivals, maybe it's on the newer, yes, I'm 18, Beyond Vape, jeez. Jeez, man, yes. The Beyond Vape Solara DNA 30, 175. So it's a DNA 30. Um, no, it doesn't have a removable battery. So what you're gonna wanna have to do, there's a lot of options for you. Um, Hexome. Check out the Hexome. Check out the Hexome from Craving Vapor. It's an OKR10, so it'll do 50 watts. You can put your own 18650s in it. It's a very solid, durable uh, design. I, I didn't do a full video for it. I did one for the Duke, which is somewhat like the Hexome. Um, but yeah, uh, variable wattage, but it doesn't have a display. Um, I'm trying to think of a variable wattage DNA 30 that has removable batteries other than the vapor flask that has a display. I am drawing a complete blank right now. Complete blank. Um, there are some China mods that you could go after. You could go after something like the Segeli 50 watt or the Segeli 100 watt. For battery life, I might go with the Segeli 100 watt on that. Um, just because it has 100 watts does not mean you have to use all 100 watts, especially if you have a Nautilus Mini. You'll probably end up turning it up to like 14, maybe 15 watts, ooh, if you're really feeling brave. But, uh, but yeah, that's what I can think of off the top of my head. Maybe check out, check out the Hexome from Craving Vapor. Maybe check out the, uh, the Solara from Beyond Vape. And maybe, just maybe, the, uh, the Segeli 50 watt or the Segeli 100 watt might be something, uh, might be something that you're looking for. I uh, hope that kind of answers your questions. Um, next up, oh no, Sandra, that is You Are Spam. Why do you uh, why do you get in there? Uh, next up on the viewer mail, figs93. What's up, Grim? I've emailed you before and you've helped me out a lot. Cool. I always get nervous when people tell me that they emailed me because I I'm like, did I did I reply? Please tell me I replied. You've actually. Uh, checked out a video I made a while back on the bands that were going on at the time. Anyway, I need some help. I recently bought a Panzer clone from a local vape shop. Not local vape shop, but a local vape shop. And I was freaking in love with it until I came home and found out that the firing button slash safety lock had broken. I was just wondering if you knew anywhere you could find replacement parts for it. I've been looking everywhere and can't find anything at this point. I'm ready to say screw it and buy another one. But I figured I'd email you first. So I don't... Uh, I don't know where, shoot man, I don't know where you can get Panzer clone replacement parts. If they're not at the shop that you bought it from, you might be better off just buying a new Panzer clone. What are they, like $30, $40? In fact, Figs, uh, just email me um, like you already have, and uh, I might have a Panzer clone that I can just give you. I think I have a Black Hawk Panzer clone somewhere. That I, I can just I can just send it to you if you want it. I don't care. Even if you just want the switch, I'll just send you the switch. Um, it does not get a lot of use because I'm not super pumped on it. Um, I was going to do a Panzer uh, Authentic slash Panzer clone side by side, but there's been so many Panzer videos. Um, Grand Vapor Station was nice enough to send me a Panzer. Uh, it's back here. Fantastic mech mod. I've been using it like crazy. And once you have held and used a real Panzer mod, the clone, ooh, it just seems so chintzy. But uh, get back to me, Figs93, and uh, maybe we can uh, maybe we can get you sorted out. Maybe I can get you a uh, maybe I can get you just a whole uh, whole new clone. Um, last one of the night, uh, Matt. He says, "I'm a huge fan with a huge concern." I'd like to start off with I'm a huge fan, and I think you're awesome. Uh, 
come on. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't go there. Don't make this weird. Don't make this weird, Matt. I've been six months free of cigarettes. I feel great. Uh, a crowd of me and my buddies have been vaping at the same time. And one of my buddies came across the SoundCloud podcast. I guess it is. And it opened our eyes to something that everyone has known for a while but just slept under the rug. Diacetyl. This stuff is nuts. And I know you're deep rooted into our community. And I was wondering if you know anything further uh, and your knowledge on it. A lot of big companies like Suicide Bunny, Space Jam, Five Puns, and others are loaded with diacetyl. Now, I can't confirm his uh, his allegations of Suicide Bunny, Space Jams, and Five Puns being loaded with diacetyl or diacetyl. I just felt like I needed to share this with you since I turned to you for advice on vape gear, and I know you'll back up the community with arms up in the air. Thank you for taking time to read my long email. Ha, 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 ha. Here's a link for the SoundCloud. Um, yes, he gave me a link to the ClickBang uh, episode that I have already listened to. Um, yes, diacetyl. Diacetyl's a thing. Uh, diketones are a thing. Um, the best thing that I think we can do is just contact whoever makes your juice and ask them straight up, is there diacetyl? Or is there, what's the other one? Uh, a, a propanol, propanol? Acetylpropanol. Acetylpropanol. Ask them if there's diacetyl or acetylpropanol or any diketones in their liquids. Um, if they don't tell you, then you simply go somewhere else and buy your juice from somewhere else. Uh, I do believe in harm reduction. Um, I do believe in having the safest product possible. I also believe that uh, adults are grown-ass adults who can make their own decisions on what they want to vape. Um, there's a difference between buying a juice so let's say I love this juice. I love Milk Plus from Bonsai Vapors. I love Donut Pounder from Epiclouds. I love the Philip Rock uh, Grand Reserve. If I vape those juices knowing full well that there's diacetyl in them, and I'm not saying that there is, but if I vape those juices full well knowing that there's diacetyl in them, then that is up to me to make that decision. So there's a difference between vaping juices you know have diacetyl or acetylpropanol in them. And there's a difference between that and not knowing. So if you're just vaping a juice thinking, wow, this is great, I'm being so much healthier, but it's loaded with diacetyl and you don't know about it, that's kind of where uh, that's kind of where it gets a little bit into the gray area. So I think the best thing you can do is simply uh, contact whoever you're buying juice from and ask them. Just say, is there diacetyl? Is there acetylpropanol? Are there diketones? in your liquids because I'm trying to be as safe as possible. And if they say yes and you're okay with that, then you continue to vape their juices. And if they say yes and you're not okay with that, then you take your money elsewhere. That is how the free market works. Matt, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for your concerns. Um, as I was sitting here answering emails, I got five more emails. Um, and there's a lot. So yeah, we covered a lot. We did some shout outs. We talked about the uh, peanut butter milk stout. Thank you so much, Trevor, for sending that my way. We did some first impressions. We did a slight review uh, and we answered some viewer mail. I'll have links in the description to everything that we talked about. Uh, additionally, uh, yeah, there's, there's some stuff coming up. Um, there's a lot of stuff coming up. I'm kind of getting into the gear that I got at ECC. Uh, I think, I think on the next double feature, I might do the Oros mech. I saw that Ruby Roo just put up her video. I'm excited to watch it. Uh, I might do the uh, Tilimajos from GG, their K-Fun killer that I got from, uh, from uh, Rob at Fluid Vapor. Um, there is a wooden mechanical mod that I keep talking about um, that I'm getting some other replacement parts for, so that get, might get pushed back a little bit. There's the Red Horse 26650. There's the Ramble. Uh, there's the Solera still. Um, there's a lot. The Segeli 50 watts, the Segeli 100 watts. There's still a lot coming up, you know what I mean? Um, things are crazy here in the uh, at the Grim Green Industries, um, and uh, I hope to remain on top of my game uh, no matter what the future can possibly throw at me. So, uh, so that's what I got. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining me again for another vlog. I do appreciate it, and I rarely say this, and I'm going to say it again, that if you like what you like, then like the video. Go ahead. You can like it. Uh, always feel free to comment. Always, for anybody, feel free to uh, 
share, play these videos anywhere you want their information and information is meant to be spread freely so you can play, embed these videos anywhere you want, like, comment, and subscribe, what up? Um, yeah, that's what I got. That is what I got. So thank you again so much for watching. Which mod? Since it's right here, how about the KM? That's what I got. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. And as always, let's keep on vaping. Do you ever just vape way too much and feel like you need to drink like a freaking gallon of water? That's literally what just happened to me. Mm. <sighs> Stay hydrated, friends. Stay hydrated.